This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Aloha! How you doing? Gordo the Texar here. Welcome to another exciting and thrilling and off-the-edge Hibachi talk show. So I'm here by myself. Not really, but I'm here by myself with no co-host because uh, Andrew, the security guy, is off securing. But I have the ever so lovely Heather Patterson here, Chief Happiness Officer. I love that term, Chief Happiness Officer. Um, what's the name of your firm? Happier Talent Development. Happier Talent Development. We're going to talk about happiness in the workforce. That's right. Why, why do I need to be happy in the workforce? We'll, we'll, we'll talk about that in a second. Look, I love the look already. I got the look. <laughs> We're going to have a fun day because you got an old butt and then you've got someone who's a hell of a lot younger. So <laughs> grab yourself a chair, pull up a libation and sit down. We don't have any um, solo cups or anything today because I've been running around doing meetings all day. I didn't have a chance to pull Angus around with me or anything like that. So it's just going to be you and I. Okay. Now, you've been on a previous show. Yes. And so people can go back and look at that one. But let's just reacquaint people, a little background on yourself who you are, where you're from, what you're doing. Yeah, sure. Heather Patterson, I'm a Chief Happiness Officer. I have a firm called Happier Talent Development. So I primarily work with business leaders and their teams and helping them be more effective, more productive, get along better, be happier. Be happier. At, at work. At work. Yeah. Like, why should I care? So I'm going to be, I'm going to be a curmudgeon today. Okay, okay. look at that look. Okay, so I'm going to be bring a, it. Bring it on, bring it on. <laughs> I'm going to be a curmudgeon. I've been working for over 60 years, and I can tell you right now, at no time in my 60 years of working has someone came in to say, are you happy in your work today? Yeah, that's really too bad. I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> so why do I care? Why do I care? I mean, I'm always happy. I'm just that by nature. But why do I care about being happy? What good, what, yeah. What's the upside? What's the upside? I get this question a lot, right? Because okay. having this title in this business, happier and a happiness officer, people are sometimes oh, yeah, you know, well, look at me. skeptical. <laughs> and I absolutely, absolutely uh, understand the concern. What is this all about? So it's about, well, it's a third of your life. A True. third of your life. So half of your waking hours, you're at work. And this idea of being happy means that you're going to be healthier, that you're going to have better relationships, that you're going to be working towards something that matters, that you know matters. You're going to have more purpose. So you're going to be more, more fulfilled. So it's better for the business. But aren't I, aren't I get, being fulfilled by getting a paycheck? No, money, money is fleeting. It only goes so far. Oh, oh, contrary to me. I mean, I, I like my cash. When well, sure, comes, sure. I like when the check comes sure, in. Sure, absolutely. And so it's not that, oh, like, don't pay the employees. Just make sure that they're, they're happy. happy. Yeah, they're, oh, I like that. It's not like that at all. But it needs to, it goes further than. Money okay. will only go so far. All right. right? I'll we just give you that. keep making money. We'll just keep spending money. So we need it to be fair, first of all, fair and, you know, um, relative to the value that we're we're bringing absolutely it allows us to live a lifestyle that you know helps us achieve other things that we want to reach for maybe it's education or experiences with our family that sort of thing is it because we're in a different um, type of businesses that we were in the industrial age per se when I was manu we were manufacturing you stood on an assembly line and you did what you did every day and you worked 35 years for that company as a union person and then you retired and that was it I yeah, mean, but, well, the world of work has certainly changed. Okay. Yeah, totally. And I think the way that we look at our lives has changed, too. That we are more, as a human race, sort of recognizing we have this one life, and we ought to use it wisely. And we recognize that a third of it is at work, and okay. that it's not like this separate part it's, it's part of our whole life. So my comment on this is third of your life, and, I, and you're going to love this. Unless, of course, you're a millennial, because a third of your life is Starbucks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm and on then, the cusp. And then, I know. And then the other third of your life is talking about whether or not you're going to get a job. So now we're down to the remaining third of your life, which you spend sleeping. And then you're telling me you're going to be a millionaire every time you're 30. So, I mean, this is what I deal with a lot. And so, so I look at your... But I do. I do. And I'm trying to get, get this all, like, how do I get... How do I get motivation and understanding that you know you do have to work hard and it, ain't, it might not be happy all the time oh sure well how do you get that or how do you get give, how do I give instill it that in instill them instill it whoever them are and them could be a 60 year old so right. I, how do I install that right in them? right so I get asked the millennial question a lot okay. and I tend to say hey let's back up a little bit all right. and recognize that yes these generalizations we do this a lot you know just as humans we like to 
typecast and box people and in. And profile. And profile. We do. Like, you know, you know, I'm not supposed to know anything about tech. Right. right. I'm too damn old. To right. You're too, you're too old. Yeah. Right? I, I could be sued if I said that to you at work. Right? You're, you're protected. <laughs> well, you there's another problem. There's another problem. Is that a problem? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like, oh, wait, I can't say this because I might get sued. But we're not going to go down that. We yeah, came into the happiness the, side. Let's, right. do, let's talk about, you know, I'm going to call my lawyer <laughs> in the morning. <laughs> but but, the, but it, it, the world is different now, you know, and the way that we, we work is different. And um, I guess, so, so we're getting back to the, you know, how do you instill that in someone right. else? Right. is dial it way back and remember these generalizations yes sometimes they are helpful but they may not always be serving you okay. they may not be helpful always and so I guess the question would be well is this generalization helping you and are you willing to be wrong oh yeah are you I'm, willing to be I'm, wrong I'm about wrong every day I mean if you're willing to admit you know you learn by trial and error not by trial and right right and and so that's you Gordo, oh, yeah. but is it everybody? Well, so which begs the next question. So how do you, how do you, now you're in an interesting field. Mm -hmm. How do you get someone to say, you know, I think I ought to bring you into my company. Mm -hmm. no, I'm an exec, I'll, talk, I'll play a role. I'm so-and-so senior executive, my companies, you know, we're hitting our 30% margins. We're successful. You know, um, not everybody around the halls are smiling, but why should I give a rat's mm. patootie because I'm, we're, our margins are there? Why would I want to bring you into my company? So this is a hard challenge for you. So this is how would you yeah. how would you get them to uh, wake up to what's going on? It typically boils down to one word. Oh, drama. Oh, oh, drama. There's either drama internally with okay. people, and they're sort of like, I don't know what to do about this, but right. I know I need to address it because it's hurting productivity, it's hurting my retention of my employees, okay. it's hurting attracting my ability to attract right. top talent. I mean, that's everybody's big problem, right. att attracting and retaining. Or it's drama with the people in the organization outward to public, to the customers, and they need some resetting and training and development. And, and that, that has area. nothing to do with millennials, boomers, Gen X's or whatever, or is there, is there, is, is, I see, I see you're swaying, so I'm like, you're going to educate me here. So is it, is it there? And before you answer the question, I've got to give you one of my favorite quotes. Okay. I worked for the Hanneman administration. Okay. Rufi Hanneman was mm -hmm. the, the mayor at the time, and he said one of the first times in the cabinet meeting, he sat there in, in the meeting, he said to everybody, save the drama for your mama. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And he said that, and it really sent a great message, right? Yeah. He didn't want drama. Right. Just get the job done. Right. Right. So now we did have a lot of fun, so there was a happiness factor in great. what went on when we worked yes. there. So I mean, come back to your saying. So, it's, where is it? Does drama? So the question is, does drama lie within this multi generational? Yeah. Or is it more in the younger ones, or is it? I believe that everyone would be to blame. I don't think there's okay, a finger, okay, like a you, single finger that we can them. point. Um, you know, <laughs> drama is usually a result. So, so my work again, it's about results and relationships, and that's okay. the science of happiness at work. Right. You know, so it's all proven. Daniel Kahneman. You know, if people are really skeptical, they can go and Google it. Right. Um, you know, it's a, it's relationships and, and results. So when I have this typecast in my mind and I have this closed mind about it and I'm not taking the time to get to know you and empathize with your, your background, your history, your beliefs, your value set, then chances are I'm going to have relational conflict with you. But how do you, how do you as an employee, employer, executive, whatever, whatever got to run the company? How do you have time to do this? I mean, we're, you know, we have enough things stealing away our time to be able to get to know you, this employee, this employee. This. How do you do this? You prioritize it. You've you, got to put it in the list. You, it, it has to be the number one thing. Your people are your competitive advantage. Your people are what runs your business. Mm -hmm. So you don't have time not to do it. So it, that's, the, that's, that's the message. That's the message. And if you look at any successful company now, right, right now, dealing in this very volatile sort of, you know, environment with a quarter of their employees or more having millennials, they are taking the time to personally connect with 
their employees and they hire people who are able to do that. They're hiring leaders and coaches, not just managers who know how to do the thing better than their employees. You see, they're hiring people that have the, the, the skills to connect with the people so that they have the relationship and then can lead them so that they're able to do their work. So is this, 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 this kind of like the high tech, high touch kind of thing? Is it, is it, is it, is it we ought to be touchy feely or, you know, can you still be stern? Can you still say, you know, you don't yell at them in the middle of the hallway in front yeah. of all their peers, but bring someone back into the, into your office and say, you know, I have a little bit of a problem with this, 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 and this, or, or, or you say, oh, it's, oh, by the way, are you happy at your work? Oh, you're not. Goodbye. <laughs> Yeah, so it's a mixture, and I think stern, stern is a little bit subjective. You know, people have different styles and different approaches. I personally am a fan of this idea of radical candor and that people... Okay, what's radical candor? Okay, radical candor is the idea of giving feedback and not dancing around it. Oh, okay. And, and really, millennials want that. They're accustomed to it. That device that you have sitting in front of you, they're used to going, blah, 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 boom, answer. Like, they get feedback So would they prefer regularly. feedback? Because this is a good... So, this is a, so would they prefer radical candor? Heather, I'm having a little issue with the dot, da da me coming and saying it to you or saying, Heather, I'm having a little issue with such and such that I put it in capitals and sent it to you. Oh, mm, well... <laughs> <laughs> I think that's on a per person basis. Okay. Uh, but generally speaking, since we have to sometimes use gener generalizations, right. that sort of feedback is best Be uh, given face to face. Face to face. Okay. So yeah. it's good. So mm -hmm. that at least is on is kind of staying in the playing field. I mean, because I the last yeah. thing in the world, the thing I hate the most, is someone having a heated discussion with someone on email. Oh, that's a terrible it's, idea. It's, 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 it, but but. Drama. It's drama. Right? You know, all the things, and, you know, as being mm -hmm. a former uh, runner of large organizations that came in and, well, they put everything in capitals and they were yelling at me yeah. in their emails. Like, sure. Like, oh, wait, they don't know how to type in lowercase. Right. <laughs> sure. And so we have to be willing to also know that people are are, these are people right. at work. Not this device. Right. And, and, and they're, right, they're not devices. They're not bots or machines. They're humans, and they're going to make a mistake. Yeah, well. And people really and truly, I mean, generally speaking, yeah. are not out to intentionally hurt other people and you know, make people feel bad. Like, but what if they're trying to pull them down because they can't, because they themselves can't get to their level? So if they mm -hmm. have, a, this is one of the things that I, I've, I've observed over my years. Yeah. You get someone who's a who's a manager, yeah. you know, middle manager side, okay. right? Who has an employee that's, you know, you can see that one day that employee is going to be definitely they're rising up, right, rising up. Yeah. But this manager does everything they can to pull them back down to their level. Mm -hmm. And I see, I, I still see that in this day and age, mm -hmm. and I see that. Especially in union shops. Yes. In union shops, I see that tremendously. It's, yeah. you know, I have to be the smartest one in the pile. Yeah, yeah. Do you see that? When I, you're, I, I see it, and it's very unfortunate. And there have been times where I have coached my one on one clients, uh, or even clients that have been part of the corporate, you know, coaching agreements that I've had, where it's no longer a good fit. It's they have fit. they have outgrown the organization because the leadership is not able to expand and be open enough to go let me give you more responsibility yeah, you or authority or you know room to grow. Okay, so let's take a pause on that. And we're going to come yeah. back and we're going to kind of, kind of build on it cuz I want to I want to get an idea of um, without stealing all your thunder from your competition competition is like how do you get into the organization and how do you get that organization to go around yeah and change around it's gonna yeah. be kind of fun great anyway heather patterson and i always like to see it in squash heather patterson <laughs> my father loved that name so heather patterson she's a ch the um um uh, chief happiness officer at happier talent development um here in hawaii and so we'll be back in a minute and we'll find out how she actually makes this work <laughs> This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. Match day is no ordinary day. The pitch, hallowed ground for players and supporters alike. Excitement builds. Game plans are made with responsibility in mind. Celebrations are underway. Ready for kickoff, MLS clubs and our supporters rise to the challenge. 
We make responsible decisions while we cheer on our heroes and toast their success. Elevate your match day experience. If you drink, never drive. I just walked by and I said, what's happening, guys? And they told me they were making music. Aloha, how you doing? Gordo the Texar here. I'm here with Heather Patterson, Chief Happiness Officer. <laughs> I just love it. <laughs> I could have been I could have been a chief happiness officer. I think so. I was always fitting. having fun and uh, smiling and yeah. I enjoyed I enjoy every day of the week. I mean I there isn't a day I don't enjoy. I mean it's yeah. from the moment I wake up. Well sometimes a little creaky and cringy, but I just love it. Yeah. So here you are, you're you're now going around town, you're getting you're working with large firms too, not just small, but large firms, and mm -hmm. you're getting them to to understand um, what what happiness is all about within when, within the workforce. But how do you? I just I'm still having a hard time figuring out how you get in the door and yeah. do they call you or you call them or you're doing cold calls? Hi, I'm Heather Pettis. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's primarily referral based. Okay. Yeah, or we meet it through some sort of speaking engagement that I've had okay. or something like that where. I say something and it resonates and you know the introduction is made but it's usually the people that are closest to them you know a, a fellow business owner or a fellow you know member of senior management and they have a golfing buddy or someone where they're like oh if only we could keep our people and they're like oh hey, hey. <laughs> do you know Heather yeah and that's how the conversation now, is it usually starts. through the HR departments or does it come further from the top or is it just you know it's come both you know from okay. from multiple angles you know the primary set of my clients have been groups where they don't have a dedicated HR uh, oh, department. Some okay. have, of course, okay. some of the you know larger firms, of course, um, but where I just have direct access to the, the leadership. Well, a lot, a lot of firms now outsource their HR mm -hmm. department, right? Because there's, there's, there's organizations that yeah. do that and the labor laws are so complex. Absolutely. And we've talked, you know, we talked about, like, well, I could sue you for that, for profiling right. me or whatever this kind of stuff is. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so that's happening. So, but what if an employee, like what if someone who's not executive or manager wanted to somehow get you in to come in and be able to do that? Do you have a, do you have any guiding, guiding elevator pitches yeah. you can give to them? I mean, I mean, not all executives are going to listen. Not all managers right. are going to listen. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But I think a lot of employees would like to get someone like yourself to come into their sure. organization. I've had those conversations, and uh, it's interesting. A lot of times I just say, you know, what I need from you is an introduction. Okay. We need to be, get, getting back to that radical candor, right. you know, being able to speak openly about that there's an issue, a drama, per se, or a challenge, or a goal of, if you want to reframe it, a goal of being a great place to work, and I think we could use some help here. So you have to have this culture already of hi I, I'm, I'm willing to have someone else have a look at this have, have a look yeah at this. yeah I have a client right now and they're just absolutely they're one of the most wonderful clients I've ever had because yeah. and they're having me look at their technology stuff and so on and um, the operation I would say from a 90 plus percentile all work well together um, and the generations are miles apart yeah but it's just there's somehow there's this culture that's formed through this entire long-time organization that's just there. Yeah. Um, but it's getting that younger person to have, and I see, I'm saying younger because usually the new employees are younger. Yeah. And it's the old guys sure. and girls that have been that's sitting fair. in the management positions. Yeah. I mean, that's typically what it is. Right. It's not very often when you see the millennials at the top or Gen Xs or whatever, mm -hmm. see, I'm not profiling, mm -hmm. whatever's at the top and they're hiring me. Well, in my case, it's a lot like that, but I'm not a very good job. <laughs> it's but, not but, it, but it's not typically what you, what you would see. It's usually the senior bringing, bringing in yes. the junior. But it's, it's getting the senior to realize that this would be a nice thing to happen. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, again, I'm, it's going to be tough on that intro to get the senior... So, have you got any success stories you can talk about? Well, I have some success stories. Without naming the company. You know, or you can. It's up to you. Yeah. It's, it's your call. Um, some of them I can name. So, okay. I'll, I'll do... 
I'll share a, co a couple examples. Okay, that'd, two be, examples. that'd be good to see. Yeah. One okay. is where I worked with the group on a corporate level, and this is probably my most ideal situation. A real estate firm here in Honolulu um, worked with a very senior, you know, with the senior leader, the team leader. His name's Kevin Niyama. So Keller Williams Honolulu is the company. Okay. And uh, he was referred to me by one of his agents, uh, uh, you know, an agent, a high-producing agent who has a vested interest in the success. So of a high-producing agent. So he has or she has the ear of it has the ear. Of the they, person they have of influence, the and yeah. and people all up and down the organization okay. have influence. So if you're a strong, I'm going to if you're a strong, hardworking an employee that really has that the senior execs are aware of, Attention. then there's a good chance they might listen to a recommendation on yeah, your Yeah, yeah. Okay. And so bring value, and okay. you'll have people's attention. Okay. All right. there, <laughs> I mean, you got to bring, so value. You go. bring value. Bring value. Then, oh, I, I don't care this. how old yeah. you are. Bring value. Yeah. I don't care that you've managed to be here a whole week, <laughs> and you're not the president yet. Yeah. But bring value. Bring and value. Then, oh, what a, great, what a great concept. Bring value, and higher up the ladder will actually be paying attention to you. Yep. Okay. Sorry. Absolutely. But yeah. We just I had an epiphany here. No, I love it. Thanks. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So he says, "Hey, you know, I know that retention is a goal of the company. So he's been listening. He reframes the goal to back to the leader. I have someone that you might want to talk to. Okay. That's it. So we go in. I have my standard consultation questions where we talk about challenges and you know what they're doing to address those challenges, what they're sort of open to. And while I'm having this conversation, I'm also looking at are you are you coachable? You know, what sort of body language is you know, there's like Yeah, what is that like? And and as a person who's been in this business for you know, I think 30 years or more, Kevin has, has been doing this. I mean, yeah, he was a little skeptical. What is this millennial, yeah. you know, yeah, he's, gonna... He's, he's gonna be like I am. It's like, so what's the big deal? Yeah, what, what are you gonna teach me? Yeah. You know, and, and so we devised a plan. So I learned about the organization a little more, their current habits, how the team comes together already, because I, I integrate. I don't introduce like these big, grand workshops that the team would never be a part of in the yeah. first place. I find a solution that fits who they are and, and how they go about their work already. So we worked up a schedule where every other week I was coaching with the senior leader, with Kevin and um, his right-hand person named Christy. And then we did monthly engagements with the staff. Okay. And those engagements were anything from workshops and learning about concepts like accountability and communication to team building, more team building oriented workshops where they were learning about, you know, who each other were outside of work, what their interests are, their hobbies, the things that were, were important to them, and they got to share and, you know, just spend time getting getting to know each so other. So was the goal holding on to your most productive employees and at the same time having your most productive employees bring in new potential? Well, the goal, for, the, agents, the goal so for them was re retention of, off of administrative staff. Oh. So it wasn't uh, designed to recruit agents. agents. Okay. That's a whole other strategy okay. that okay. I don't really have the qualifications the or, or you know, yeah. uh, but to have a administrative team that was cohesive, was communicating, so that they could then support the agents. The agents are their customers, really. Okay. Right, and so they needed to be able to communicate well with each other, but also outwardly to some pretty demanding. And yeah, the agents need to understand that they're not the only star in the sky. Right. No, you need your support team to have that that administrative aspect be able to flourish. So you were building an understanding of uh, understanding of expectation, but at the same time, with that tying to it, a relationship factor. This is my interpretation. Yeah. And at the same time, making it enjoyable. Yes. So we had we had fun together. We introduced systems. So, for example, and now every single meeting that Kevin has, he has, um, it's his personal note taking system. But the concept that I introduced to him was this idea of who, what, and when. Real simple, right? Who agreed to what and when is it due by? And he refers back to that who, what, when with each person that he's meeting with every time. So that the little things that we say, oh yeah, I'm gonna do that in the meeting, or oh yeah, you go ahead and take care of that, those things get addressed and they don't drop. So so that makes me so is constant feedback something that is now something should be happening all the time? Because again, I'll go back to this my career growing up. 
I, you know, I got the job done. I didn't expect any kind of feedback. Yeah. Unless it was wrong. Right. Unless it was right. Negative, no right? news was good news. Yeah, no sort of. news was good news. So mm -hmm. is, is, are we now uh, our society in such a way or our workplace such a way that there needs to be constant feedback? I would say so, yes. I, I absolutely support that idea. That is the nature of our world, right? I mean, we get notifications that say, like, this thing is broken and we're going to do an update. And it, it's, it happens all around us. Why wouldn't it happen at work? At work, where you can, where you can kind of, you know, as it happens in our lives, right? You know, yeah. Uh, when my lovely bride thanks me for cleaning the condo, I go, oh, that was kind of nice of it. Yeah. You know, I, yeah. I did it, but I, I, there was, it there was a nice feedback. and. Like right. a pat on the back, and it's nice. And a tip on that is people need, the research shows that people need five points of praise for every one negative. Okay, five. I, I was seven to one in my day. I thought it was seven attaboys to make up for one oh shit. Mm. Oh, yeah. There goes a level. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, but okay. So five to one. Five points of praise for? For every one piece of negative. Okay, what are the five points of praise? Well, things like, thanks for cleaning the condo, Oh, okay, Gordo. so there's no like, you know, oh, I got to bring up my little, my my cliff notes and go like these. Oh, no, five. no. Okay. But, but just, you know, five for every one. Okay, so, so, so mm -hmm. five points of praise. So here's good message for those that are watching. Yeah, really you know, practical takeaways. Practi yeah, practical giveaways, right? You know, mm -hmm. five points of praise. And then I think this would be the same with life, right? Yes, take this and do it at home, too. <laughs> with the, you know, the, you Susie or Johnny doesn't get their homework done. Okay, hey, come on. You can't get the homework done. Give me a break. But then when they do get it, say, wow, you got your homework done today. Oh, and by the way, you did this. Oh, yes. So, but you got to do five to one. Five to one. Five out of boys mm -hmm. to one OS. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's a good that's <laughs> yeah. a good that's a good take home. Yeah. Okay, so we're winding up down. We got like a little okay. less than a minute. Before. Okay. So you got any one message or get us your website and so that you would like to get out there sure. between all of us non millennials, millennials, Gen X's that we're not profiling. Sure, sure. So <laughs> being happy at work, it it's a it's a journey, it's a process. Okay. And what matters is that you you start and I, I play, but it's also real. Start with a smile. Oh, you can yes. literally just change your face. Yeah. Do that a little more, and it will spread. It will spread. And um, how to find me is on my website. You can go to heatherpatterson.com okay. and find me there. I do weekly YouTube videos so that yeah, people I've have free those. takeaways yeah. every week. They're all there. And right? it's for all levels. There's points for execs and points for the line level employee. It's free 99. Free 99. Perfect price. Yeah. Okay. Well, Heather, thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you. We're going to do this quarterly. What you said yes. last time, we're going to do, your smile is just mag, you know, <laughs> it's a magnet anyway. Thank you. But we're going to, I, I've been accused of flirting with the female guest. Oh. And I like it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so it's great to have you on the show. We'll have you back in another quarter. We'll talk about how things are progressing and maybe have another success, success story. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, welcome to, welcome here to Hibachi Talk. Thank you guys for joining us. And like we say at the end of every show, one, two, three, how, how you, you doing? doing?